Hello, YouTube. Sorry for the long uh, delay in posting additional media, but I have an update for you. Today is July 25th, 2023. It is approximately 124, or excuse me, 127 uh, in the afternoon Pacific time here in Sacramento, California. You're looking at my Red Sea Reefer 625 XXL that is about three months out of warranty now. Purchased in 2020. And uh, just a little bit of history. I started with a Red Sea Reefer 170. Outgrew that tank. Got a Red Sea 250. Outgrew that tank and got this big 165 gallon tonal system volume tank here. And uh, have grown into it. Now, if you watched my previous videos, there is a series on this channel talked about the Red Sea Reefer 250 tank blowout. And just like several of you out there, uh, you have seen how the front panel of that glass on that aquarium in real time blew out on a Friday evening at about seven in the evening, ruined my hardwood floor, ruined a couple of outlets in my kitchen, just about shorted out my entire home and caused a fire. But yet, hey, it's Red Sea. They stand behind their product. So I contacted them. They supplied me with an upgraded G2 version tank. Came with the Reef ATO. And uh, while I'm in the process of considering what to install in that tank, my Red Sea Reef LED 90s would not connect to uh, Wi-Fi. So as you can see, those have been discarded and I went back to some very old, probably five-year-old Kessel AP700s. And those are installed and I have not had one issue with connectivity, with scheduling, with parameters, with firmware or anything. Now these videos aren't meant to compare one product or one manufacturer over another nor are they to discern or disparage or what's a good way, uh, defame uh, any manufacturer. They are simply to outline and video log the extreme failures that every single piece of Red Sea equipment I have purchased has failed. It has failed and I am at the point to where all I have left is a Red Sea Reefer 625 and a uh, misdesigned, inefficient plywood stand sitting in my living room. It's still under warranty. I got about three months to go. And I'm praying that this tank doesn't blow out within those three months. But if it does... I will be considering taking this up legally with Red Sea yet once again. All right. So on this tank, and the reason for this vlog is I have yet another Red Sea equipment failure, and this time it's on the reef mat. So to bring you up to speed, 625XXL, two Kessel AP700s. I use Neptune Apex for monitoring as well as flow. I use the Neptune Waves. I have one here and one here on the back of the tank. Have not have any issues. They clean easily. I can adjust the schedule, etc. I dose red, uh, Seachem Fusion 1 and 2 for alkalinity and calcium. I use Dr. Tim's bio pellets in a reactor and one little bag of Fosgard. And I use a Delua skimmer with a converted Fosband reactor right up in there as my CO2 scrubber. That is it. As you remember, I started this tank with the Red Sea RSK skimmer, which failed. The first thing that happened on that was that the little uh, neck cleaner scrapers, the little windshield wipers in the top of the collection cup to help keep the collection cup uh, free of, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, skimmate, uh, those fell off. 
So of course, what do you do as a average consumer? You take them off and consider using the uh, skimmer as is. Next thing that happened is the collection cup and the skimmer body uh, basically welded itself together because the size of the O-rings were too large. And once they got wet and they got salt creep in there, you had to take the entire skimmer out and dump out the skimmate or use the drain hose. Now, obviously, whenever skimmate has any kind of algae or anything in there, it's going to clog up the drain and hence the skimmer is not going to work. I also had an extreme problem trying to tune that skimmer. So that skimmer is no longer with us. And I have went to a Delua, uh, much thicker uh, polycarbonate. Um, you can run uh, ozone versus the Red Sea, very thin, cheaply made skimmers with the thin plastic. So not gonna have that issue with a Delua. So consider getting one of those. This small or smaller uh, takes about half of the footprint of the Red Sea RSK skimmers and uh, works, I would say, probably 10 times better. Now, I am running ChemiClean in this tank. That's why you see the additional aeration. So I've got two air stones in the display tank and I've taken my collection cup off of the skimmer and I've got it turned up full blast so it's uh, given that supplemental aeration. I had some, uh, some uh, cyanobacteria up on the uh, return nozzle up here as well as over here on this rock and a couple down over here a little and i couldn't get it i brushed it off and it kept coming back so hence the chemi clean treatment today is the 48th hour of the chemi clean treatment so i'm gonna need to do my water change today i'll do one brute size uh brute ga uh, trash container uh brute 44 gallon, I'll change that. That's about 10, 15% of this water volume. And then I'll run a bag of carbon in here to get any additional of the ChemiClean. Now, once I don't run any carbon uh, unless I need to. Uh, if there's, you know, uh, if it gets that fishy smell in the house or whatever, I'll run some carbon, but other than that, that's it. So there's no chemical influence on the, uh, anything that Red Sea equipment should, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not been um, any kind of harsh chemicals or anything like that other than salt water and the normal, uh, you know, salt mix that I use. Uh, I use Fritz, RPM, Redbox, the high alkalinity, and um, that's it. So nothing in anything that I use in my reef tank uh, should um, hamper the normal operation on any kind of equipment that's designed appropriately for this hobby. The Reef Mat 1200. Okay, on this tank I had to modify my sump. If you remember the sump uh, dividers, the refugium divider, as well as the divider for the uh, uh, return pump, the silicone failed. So Red Sea stood behind their warranty. They sent me a replacement sump. I then had to take the support bracket here off, remove all the equipment. This is the new sump. And then they came out with the reef mats. Reef mat 1200 is made for a mid to large size aquarium and a reef mat 500, obviously the dollar number, model number, uh, is made for a smaller uh, aquarium. I went ahead and got the reef mat 1200. However, I had the older version of a sump which had the permanently installed uh, filter sock holder. So Red Sea, uh, supplies a what's called sump modification kit. It's basically a kit with a very thin razor blade that you use to cut the silicone for the dividers and the support plate for your filter socks in the older version sumps. Hence, less support within the sump and now you're relying on the silicone on the sides and bottom of the sump solely. So in order to put the reef mat in, you have to remove, like I said, the dividers for the filter socks. You also have to cut your overflow pipe below your adjustment knob here that I'm touching. Um, you cut that and then there's a flexible tube that you mount on there. And then the flexible pipe goes into the side of the, the uh, reef mat system here. And then as water flows down through that, it turns around, it flows out the bottom and as the, the water um, 
flows through and the filter, the fleece sock, uh, cat, or the fleece roll catches the debris, the water level rises, it, it gets clogged and there is a uh, optical sensor over here, electric sensor over here that, that adjusts the water level, or that shows the water level. As soon as the water hits that, it advanced, it automatically advanced the filter roll. So you get some clean fleece and the water level within goes down, okay? So on the side of, and I'll show you just a minute, there is an overflow little area. Uh, if anything gets jammed in here, uh, it, it still is able to flow the water through without dumping all over your floor, which I'm glad that happened. So I just came in here, grabbed the phone because yet again, another Red Sea failure. Let's go this uh, through this together. I'll show you exactly what I'm dealing with and uh, why you should think twice if you're considering buying anything, anything manufactured, designed by Red Sea, okay? So the first thing that happens is you're gonna get alert on your ReefBeat app, and that is the app uh, that, that operates uh, the ReefMat uh, drive motor here. You'll see the, the black uh, object on, with the flashing light. There is an error on that. And the error I get was uh, jammed roll. Okay, so uh, thinking, oh, it's the fleece roll is jammed somewhere. Maybe the starfish got in the gears or something like that. Nope, not a problem. So let's go through this together. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna remove the clean fleece. Place that in its little area here. We are gonna remove the used fleece, so there's nothing on the drive gears. Now the front, I've got this mounted on the left side, so the front one is basically a free spinning wheel, and the rear one is the drive. So I cannot move the rear one, but I can free spin the front, okay? Now, in a perfect world, I should be able to push advance or reverse here, and hear the drive motor and the gears move. So pressing, nothing, reverse, nothing let's look at it from this angle so you see that the drive gears are not working so pressing on operate nothing pressing on reverse we we'll get a better shot of that one nothing so i have already taken out the drive motor and i have double checked that the connectors on the back of the drive motor the wires are operable and there's no, you know, fraying or anything like that. There's no debris in there. I see still an error message and I'm still getting the jammed mat notification in my ReefBait app. I went in, I reset saying I've corrected the jam, the this, this supposed jam. The, and then the ReefBait app uh, notifies me that it has a firmware upgrade. Now this is unique because today, July 25th, there is another um, firmware upgrade. And I will say over the past month, I think I've probably put 20 to 30 firmware upgrades that has been notified on the ReefBeat app for this particular reef mat. I don't know why there's always been that many, but something's going on. And I don't know if they're trying to behind the scenes correct something in the firmware or the software or something. But anyway, I have updated the firmware and then reset everything in the ReefBeat app, disconnected the power, reconnected the power, removed the ReefMat from ReefMat and reinstalled it in the ReefBeat app. And I still have a flashing error light and I have an inoperable motor. Now I'm at a dilemma. Per Red Sea, in order to use this reef mat in this sump, I had to purchase their modification kit, cut the sump, remove the filter socks in order to install the reef mat 1200. Now, since the reef mat 1200 is inoperable, I now have no way to filter my overflow and my water in my tank because I cannot remove the ReefMat 1200 and reinstall the filter socks because the filter sock holders were removed with the Red Sea modification kit. You cannot make this up. 
So I sat here with over $20,000 in coral and fish in a Red Sea 625 with no way to filter my water. And I'm gonna have to rely on water changes until we figure out from Red Sea if they're gonna stand behind yet another warranty claim or if they're just gonna tell me to go pound sand because they're probably sick of hearing from me by now because everything I bought from them has failed. I cannot believe that this company is in business and is selling things for such a premium on the open market to the average consumer. And I don't know, I am not the only one. I've seen other videos in there. I've seen the reef clubs. Everybody's talking about the same thing. We're paying for garbage. If you're thinking about buying a Red Sea product, then go ahead and just burn your money or take the product and throw it straight in the garbage. It's not gonna last. You're gonna be left with something that's gonna end up in the landfill. And I'll tell you what, as a marine hobbyist here, I'm pretty disgusted on trying to, quote, save the planet and do my part and recycle and make sure the trash bags don't end up in the oceans and the landfill. When I go out and I buy a Red Sea product made out of polycarbonate and plastic, and now I have to throw it away, there's probably 5,000 trash bags worth of plastic in this piece of equipment right here, and the skimmer, and the lights, and now they're out there somewhere in the dump because Red Sea did not design something that would be an appropriate device that would have any kind of longevity on it. I feel personally the company is out there standing behind their warranty until we just, we as consumers just get sick and fed up and we decide we're not gonna buy any more of their products and we'll, and we'll just, you know, the warranty will go away, whatever, and they won't have to stand behind it. Well, I'm not, I'm not that way. Uh, I'm a government guy. Uh, I can take very detailed notes and I have, I've got all of my receipts, all of my documentation and I'm sitting here making real time videos for everybody out there that's, that's seeing this in real time the failures that had happened on every single piece of Red Sea equipment, their tanks, their stands, their, their reef mat, the skimmers, the dose. I, do not buy Red Sea, I can't stress this enough. You're gonna have a problem and a headache. I'm in a very quandary right now because I cannot filter my water per Red Sea's direction. In order to put the reef mat in there, I had to modify my sump to remove the filter sock holders. And now I have no way to, to put those back in because my sump's been modified. What am I supposed to do? I asked Red Sea, can you send me a version two, a G2 sump that I could put in here that actually I can remove the sock holder, uh, filter sock holder and put the, the sump in uh, or the Fleece mat, and then, you know, if that breaks, then I can put the filter socket. Oh no, the version two uh, sumps aren't compatible with the older tank systems. Well, of course not, because all I'd have to do is change the piping. So send me a new pipe and a new sump and we're good. But they don't want to do that. So now I'm stuck yet again on a, on a I just, I, I can't stress this enough, folks. You are seeing it live, real time, right here. Uh, yet another piece of Red Sea equipment is going to go in the garbage. Uh, I don't know what to do with my tank. This is $20,000-ish worth of equipment, fish, coral. <sighs> you don't see this happening with any other manufacturer. And, uh, you know, you talk to lawyers, and uh, they want to be ambulance chasers. They want to go after those people that are, you know, liable in car accidents and negligence because of... Uh, you know, malpractice and medical fields and, you know, drug and, and things like that. It, when it's a product, it falls under a totally different set of laws. And you've got the Consumer Protection Bureau um, and so forth. And, you know, a lot of lawyers out there, they need to do a class action. And when you contact them, they need to have a party of more than about 10 or 12 people that these things have failed. And so... You folks need to put your, your, your Red Sea equipment failures on YouTube, on your blogs, uh, 
and make sure that there's some resource out there that uh, when we start these class actions, we can really go after this company and get them to correct their deficiencies. They're basically designing as we're purchasing their product, okay? They're, we're buying things and then they're, do, they're using us as a consumer as a test bed for their products. And when these things fail, then they, oh yeah, we just came out with the new design. Case in point, the version one aquarium systems, the marine plywood stands were insufficient and a lot of the front panes blow out of those tanks. So Red Sea came up with a retrofit kit. And what that uh, obtained was this center support bracket right here, this, this piece of aluminum, basically holds up the center part of the stand, okay? Hopefully reinforce that part of that particle board to put a little bit more you know, support under that front pane of glass because there was no support under it. You know, it hung out in front of the cabinet, as you see here, in front of the door, okay? So then they came out with this piece of metal here, and you'll see it right here. It's kind of like an angle. So it's a piece of angle, it's mounted to the side, and that provides additional support to the front pane, okay? Well, now, that didn't even solve the problem. So when you look at the discontinued models, such as the 625XXL, I believe the 750s, 700s, uh, all the way up to the 900s, 550s, 425s, the XXLs, the older ones, the version one. You look at the stands, even the ones that have the support, guess what? Discontinued. Look at the ones that are just come out today, well, within the past month or so. They are aluminum stands with the plywood housing. So you actually have a stand that will support 3,000 pounds worth of salt water and rock and fish and coral versus just some plywood stand. So it's aluminum now. They've got better flow. They've got better overflow. They've got dual return nozzles. So you're not blasting all of your coral right here in the front and putting all the stress on the front of the glass. Um, You've got a version two sump, so you can remove the sock, uh, filter sock holders. You have a upgraded flow control knob here for your return, okay? Um, and you have an additional uh, area in your equipment door, or your equipment compartment, uh, where you have a, um, a power center. All of that has come out recently, and it had all come out after all of the failures on the previous models, okay? So those of us suckers who bought these tanks thinking they were top of the line and we paid a premium for it, now look at where we're stuck with. We're looking at an old version tank that's gonna blow out, that's gonna fail on us. We're, we've got a, a piece of equipment we can't use we got a sump that is obsolete now within two and a half years. You cannot make this stuff up. During the warranty period, this is what's happened. Two and a half years, folks. So if you're thinking about buying and spending five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 on tank and equipment, and it's got a Red Sea seal or brand on it, you better, you better watch some of these videos you better look at the other people that have had all kinds of failures. And the only repercussion right now is either class action or using your homeowner's or renter's insurance. We're stuck because this company is in business. Yes, it was our choice to actually purchase the product, but it was our choice to make a decision to purchase that project because we thought they did their due diligence in manufacturing, design, and testing before the product went to market. And it's obviously did not, and they are not still doing that to this day. They're throwing this crap on the market, letting us poor hobbyists figure out what works and doesn't. And then when we contact them, oh, well, we better upgrade something, and that's now obsolete. Well, what about my warranty? Uh, well, you know, it's not really a warranty. It was just kind of like you bought it and we gave you a piece of paper. So 
yeah, that's how I feel as a consumer. Uh, I hope you take a long, hard look at an, another manufacturer or another supplier or even maybe make your own or have a custom design tank it scanned um, and go out there, get you a good skimmer, take anything that is made or has a Red Sea seal on it and pass it. You do not need it. Stand by something that has been in the marketplace for a long time. It might be a smaller competitor, a competitive company, it might be a larger competitive company. It might have something very similar that doesn't have all of the wazoo features that are going to break on you as the Red Sea, but do yourself a favor. About the only thing I could, I could say that I would still use from Red Sea right now today is maybe their salt mix and maybe their uh, supplements. You know, if I need to put some magnesium in there or maybe the AB+. Plus. Okay, that's it. Stay away from Red Sea, folks. I'm going to get a hold of him and let him know uh, Mr. Griffin has another warranty claim. <clears throat> Not even within three, four months of purchasing the Reef Mat 1200. Good luck, folks. And if I'm the only one out there, well, I guess it's my fault, but I guarantee I'm not. So appreciate it. Anybody wants to drop a comment, let me know how you want to go forward with this. I'm all for it. I will sign any legal document that will help us fight back about against this company who is throwing this crap on the market and letting us figure out it's going to fail for them. We are not marketing consultants. We are not design engineers. We are average consumers that are paying a premium for this Red Sea equipment and products that are failing. They are failing and failing. I am disgruntled. Well, I'm sorry for all the negativity, YouTube. Next uh, video, hopefully a little bit better news for you. You guys uh, and gals have a great uh, rest of your afternoon, evening, and take care.